My dream has always been to be a lawyer. And this is what I'm going to offer to you today because we can talk about skepticism, we can talk about doubt, we can talk about linen, we can talk about saw, we can talk about all these amazing things and they're beautiful and they're awesome. But in here, there are people still waging a battle with skepticism and doubt. And you might be sitting here questioning everything that I have said, the validity of the life and times of Jesus, his miracles, or anything about him. But I want to speak to that one shred of faith that remains in your heart and make a case for the resurrected Jesus. In fact, I reached out to a friend of mine who comes here to TFHOC, and he's a real lawyer. And I don't want to make up anything. And I said, hey, so this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? And then he gave me like 15 text messages back, and I'm like, you're being a lawyer right now. What's the answer? And so this is what I discovered. In trying to prove a case and make a good case, you most likely will need an eyewitness and an expert witness. Rem, am I doing okay? Thank you. Connect with me after if I'm a liar. Okay, so here, an eyewitness is someone who documents could see a portion or the entire thing of a situation. That is an eyewitness. But an expert witness, someone who is trained um, in a particular field, an expert can offer information and interpret information. Remick, I got that from you. So if these two aspects are needed to prove a case, let me proffer you this. That after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, not only did the 11 disciples witness and touch the physical resurrected Jesus Christ. The two on the road to Emmaus, one of them by the name of Cleopas, saw and encountered Jesus Christ. The Spice Girls saw the risen Lord. And in fact, in 1 Corinthians 15, we are told that over 500 believers had eyewitness accounts with the resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you're like, well, I still don't believe that. There are more eyewitnesses to the resurrection of Jesus Christ than there are witnesses that George Washington crossed the Delaware River. In fact, thank you for the three people that were impressed by that, praise God. In fact, to come at this from an apologetic standpoint, a place of defending the gospel, the statistical improbability is astronomical for one person to fulfill the prophetic declaration of someone coming in as Messiah and fulfilling the prophecies of him to come. Now, statistical improbability, what does that mean? Let me give you this word example that would show the astronomical improbability. It would be like covering the entire state of Texas. Five feet deep. I'm 5'2 on a good day. Latina, okay. So I'm 5'2 on a good day, te- covering the great state of Texas, inch by inch, with five feet of quarters, painting one of those quarters red and hiding in the stack of five feet deep quarters. Then blindfolding a person, putting them on a plane, flying them over the great state of Texas, and randomly dropping them out to pick up the one red coin on the first chance. And yet one man did that in one life. In fact, if you still aren't sold on this, if there is one man who could predict their own life, death, burial, crucifixion, and resurrection and pulls it off, we should believe them. Amen? Amen. See, our faith began at Easter. Not because anyone read about Jesus, not because anyone sang about Jesus, not because anyone like talked about Jesus, but because people saw him. The martyrs of our faith in the early church formation of church history didn't die and be murdered because they sang about a man named Jesus or they read about a man named Jesus. They died because they saw a resurrected Savior who said he is and was and will be. And if you are still not convinced, an expert witness of the law. Now remember, an expert witness of the law is someone to give us information and interpret information. Paul the Apostle a man of the New Testament, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, laying out a beautiful case that we see here. He was an expert witness, not necessarily an eyewitness. He came after, but he was an expert witness. And after collecting facts and data, praying and researching, lined up that this, in fact, is Messiah, an expert of Jesus. And he wrote letters to the early church from powerful eyewitnesses and direct accounts that he had with God. And he said, let me tell you this, O Roman church. See, he wrote a letter, a book called Romans. He wrote a letter to the Romans. And this city, Rome, it was the capital, had wealth and money, popularity, philosophy, everything great was coming out of there. Let me tell you something. California is a promised land, okay? We are Rome of the day. And as Paul wrote to the Roman church, I get to utter his words over us today. In Romans 8, 11, Paul says, the same 
spirit that resurrected Jesus from the grave is alive in you. The power that resurrected Jesus from the grave is alive in you. The things that Jesus said, you will do these and greater. You don't have to walk around like the living dead because the spirit of God is alive in you. So ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I make my case for you for a resurrected savior. Take it up with the judge if you do not believe me. Because today we celebrate a man named Jesus who came and celebrated and loved us well.